What is up, mortals? Natakil4 here, and welcome back. It has nearly been one year to the day since I released part one of this tutorial, and, you know, I, I kind of just stopped using this stamp in my own videos. If, you kept, if you've kept up with me, you'll know that I just flat out stopped using it, and there's really no reason to that. I kind of just forgot a couple times, and then it became the norm not to use it. And so, because of that, I kind of forgot about this tutorial that I made and uh, forgot that I said I was going to make a follow-up on how to make the actual animated image. Um, so that's that's basically it. I just flat out forgot all around. Um, but here we are. We're now in 2012 and now to the tutorial. Guys, it's so simple. You're going to get a laugh out of this. I, I know you will. All, all this is is keyframes and light rays. Uh, actually, it's a double dose of light rays. If I drag my image, this is just a still image. If I drag it over here, and I disable the light rays that cause the effect, you can see it still has light rays. And that is because I, when I first created this two years ago, I made the image, and then I, I took a screenshot of it inside Sony Vegas, and then I used that image. So really, it's a double dose of light rays on the, the stamp. Um, but then I have this text here because the text is going to give it the double dose that the image had. And so you can see it kind of doesn't line up correctly. Uh, that's because I had to recreate this just for the video. So subscribe for the effort I put into this. Um, but anyway, onto the keyframes. Now here you'll, you'll see the keyframes down here. These are live keyframes and you can click each one to see where the movement is. Really to create the effect of movement you just have to change the light source direction, which is this little box over here. By changing this, you can... Uh, this is probably not the best example. Let me just center this up here. I think I just have to go 0 and 0. And that didn't do it. Nope. Okay, it has to be 500, 500. I haven't done this in a long time, guys. Talk about procrastination. Um, but there we go. Okay, now it's centered again. Ah, no harm done. So anyway, let me show you on this because this will be easier to uh, show. If you change this up, you can see the direction and basically with the bound radius selected and the feather up to 500, the X and Y down a little so you don't show the entire map because X and Y just X and Y just controls how much of the image you see so that's why you gotta have these down and uh, and then by changing the light source you can change which direction so it gives you the effect of movement but really you're only it, it's like looking through a glass tube is what you're doing um, so it gives the effect of animation where it's actually nothing more complicated than um, a little bit of light source change, so you're changing the direction of the light. Now, onto the placement of the key, the keyframes. After I fix that, okay, it's just about right. So you have a couple different keyframes, and each of them, uh, when creating a new keyframe, all you have to do is click ahead of the previous one, and then change your light source direction. Now you do that a few times until you get to about here and this is when I start to increase the X and Y to give it the subtle effect of the animation slowing down. It's not, as you can see by the, the direction of the light sources, it's just as sporadic as the last, but with the radius getting larger, you're seeing more of the image in each movement and it tells you that it's slowing down, like your brain tells you that the image is slowing down, but it's really not. So that's how you create the illusion there. And then when you get to here, Really, I only wanted to center up the lens flare so it's pointing directly at you or the camera. And that'll just center it up and then it stays constant for a while. And then these two points here simply go from normal to small and center. And what that does is give you the easy transition into what you saw in the first tutorial, where once you finish the first part of the image, which will be over shortly, Okay, we're halfway through, and with it getting smaller, it just transitions to look like the beginning of the other, um, beginning of the original clip. 
So we're going to go back to here. You're going to look at it. And you start out small like that, you got to end small. They're not exactly the same, but you wouldn't be able to <laughs> you wouldn't tell the difference uh unless I told you. So that's what you do there. And with the text, it's essential that the text keyframes light source matches the images or the photos light source. So you got to have them in the same position uh as these two um images have to have the same light source at the same time. Otherwise, you'll get something like this. How did I get that there? Um, so if we change the light source to here, you're going to start to see it. You see? There you go. So the light sources have to match. That's crucial. Crucial, crucial. Otherwise, you're going to end up seeing the image too early or uh, whatever. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. It's just easy to do it that way. Like here, it's not exactly the same as the stamp, but you don't see it. And it's probably not going to affect the next keyframe either. So bound your radius. Start out with a smaller X and Y. The X and Y for the text doesn't matter as much. See, they're all the same here until here, uh, because it, it's a smaller image than the, than the photograph in, uh, in the back. But uh, just bound your radius, slowly increase the X and Y to give it the effect of the image slowing down, feather it, and um, change the light sources so that the two images match. That's about it. Uh, that's if you wanted to duplicate what I did, um, like word for word. Uh, but that's the magic of Sony Vegas. You can do whatever you want to it. This is just a tutorial on how I made my stamp two years ago. <laughs> uh, hope you enjoyed. If you did, if you found it helpful, please subscribe. Now to kill for out.